thing that comes to your mind when someone says that? How about those dubs? Pretend that I was your neighbor. Yeah. And we walked out in robes. Shout out Sarah Roberts. And we got the newspaper that people now read on iPads and phones rather than actually picking it up with a rubber band. Sorry to all the uh, newspaper boys and girls out there who no longer have a job. But anyway, let's pretend that we go back like our dads did, come out to the driveway and grab the morning paper. And you look to your right and you look to your left. And, man, we catch one another's, oh, good morning, dibs. Hey, how about those dubs? How would you answer that? Nobody wants to face this team right now, Sarah. <laughs> I so didn't want to be that team. I don't want to be that they team. They are that team. Nobody wants to face. I don't know. Does anybody, and they're playing great right now. They are. They're playing good basketball. So couldn't that make them better then? Nobody wants to play this team? Or does nobody want to play the other teams in the play-in tournament either? I don't want to play the Lakers either. Well, you? you want to play Sacramento. Yes. And you, you kind of don't mind playing New Orleans. I think that uh, of those teams... You don't want to play the Lakers. I agree with and you. And you don't want to play the Warriors. Which you know you know what that means, don't you? Tell me, Mark. Um, maybe we save this for tomorrow. Okay. But um I might be okay with it if the Warriors lose tomorrow night. Whoa. Let's put it that way. To the Lake Show? Uh-huh. I think that might be advantageous. Even though that would mean you have to go down there for the playing game, the 10-9. No, you may not have to go down there for the playing game. You might have to get on I-80. Ah, gotcha, because Sack is coming back, 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 back. go see those adorable yeah. playoff providers, the Sacramento Kings. Because, by the way, like you tell me, I, this isn't even a hot take. Um, would you rather be the 9 and the Lakers are at Chase or the 10 and you're at Golden 1? I think it was the easiest answer of all time. Yeah, probably Golden 1. No doubt. Based on the fact that they lost Herder and Monk, and yep. they look to be a team that is struggling, Yep. as I borrow from Joe Namath. Yeah, absolutely. And the Lakers, I listen, let's say it out loud. I'm sorry. It makes my stomach turn to the Lakers have their number. They just do. I don't know what it is about the matchup, the size, the LeBron, whatever you want to call it. They have their number. The Warriors have, you know, just a number of weeks ago, came out and played a phenomenal offensive basketball game at Chase Center, and it still went 800 overtimes, and the Lakers <laughs> still won. So, yeah, this isn't, I don't want to hear this, oh, my gosh, Willard's scared of the Lakers. No, there's no fear and I'm also not saying the Warriors can't beat them, but there's the percentage chances of them winning a game at Sacramento versus beating the Lakers at Chase. No question which percentage is higher. Yeah. There's no question. I'd rather play Sacramento and hope the Lakers go beat New Orleans. And then once you beat Sacramento, go to New Orleans. You can beat that team too. And then go to the playoffs. Right. And you still may not, you, you're the eight and you may not get Denver. You may get Minnesota or Oklahoma City, you might. which is what the veteran teams all want to do. Let's try our hand with these these teams that don't have playoff experience, right? right. Isn't that the goal? Yeah. Okay. The goal would be to take on Minnesota in that uh, first round and you know take your chances and hope that Draymond can keep his hands off Rudy Gobert and maybe you can you can gut that thing out. You steal oh. one on the road and maybe you come back to chase and you hold serve and. You go up 3-1, and maybe you can then uh, advance to the semis like you did last year. I think Oklahoma City's the target, to be real. I think that's the team you would want if they can. But they're a game behind both Denver right. and Minnesota. Um, but if you really wanted to 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 have a first-round upset, a veteran-laden team playing well against Oklahoma City, I think that's your target. That's your bet. You want scenario A, Warriors go to Sacramento, then they go to New Orleans, then they go to Oklahoma City. For me, that's scenario A. For me, it's Minnesota. Okay. And even though Minnesota's right. got the size, because I don't believe in the the Minnesota Timberwolves as a, a team that can really beat Golden State. You I think Oklahoma City. You watched them last night. Yeah, they look good. They look good, and then they, at times they don't look good. Yeah. Oklahoma City, to me, the speed and the youth and the athleticism 
is a problem for Golden State in a long series. Yeah, but I mean, the size of, of Minnesota is a problem for, yep. for Golden State as well. Well, not now that they've got their center, TJD, yeah. holding it down at 6'9". And, and, and how are you going to stop Nas Reed from going 7 of 9 from 3 right. every single every time? Game, you, right. Every time you play him. <laughs> how are you going to stop that? Anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Tomorrow's game is tomorrow's game, and the Warriors are going to be in the play-in tournament no matter what. As soon as the Rockets started yelling on Instagram, that was the end of them. So that was kind of fun. So the Warriors are in, at least. Um, in 16 days, they will play a basketball game. Will it be here? Will it be in Sacramento? Where Will it be in L.A.? Uh, or, or will something crazy happen? That, that's, that's what it looks like we're, we're heading toward. And if the Warriors can win in that one-and-done situation, then they'll go get to play another basketball game to get into the playoffs. And, and, and to me, that is the message today. The whole idea of belief is free. You know, I spent, when you were, the, the days you missed last week when FP and I were in here, um, I spent the majority of the week sort of like, you, you. I don't even know if you listened or you would have recognized the show. He was over there, uh, oh, Warriors are great. I was just captain negative. Yeah, I heard here. a little bit of it. But I mean, it's crazy. Well, I was just trying to, I was trying to be where I was at in terms of the realistic nature of all of this. But at the same time, I, what I kept telling him every time, he was like, no, 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 the Warriors are playing well. I'm like, I can't rule it out. I can't rule it out that they're going to go on a run. And so, yeah, we've reached that point. They've got four games left. If they win them all, they're going to finish out of the Lakers and at least be the nine. That's actually so they control their own destiny, that, to that degree at least. That's wonderful. Could they go on a run? It seems unlikely, but belief is free, so stay in the moment. That's why I asked Dini and Goo, why are we doing the offseason already? Right. Because don't you all agree that whatever they do over the next two to three to four to five weeks, that affects what your opinion is on the offseason, no? It does. It, it affects our opinion. I wonder if it affects their opinion, and by their I mean Joe Lacob and Mike Dunleavy and whoever else is going to make the call on all of these changes that could be coming. I think that you look at this team and you take one of two approaches. One is, no matter what, we're kind of stuck with contracts and age and roster, and so we're going to run it back, and that's just the way it's going to go. Chris Paul is gone. Kevon Looney likely will be gone. And other than that, you're going to bring everybody back. You're going to try to get Clay in at a number that works for both parties, and you're going to run it back because you have no other choice. The other tack is, well, this is not good enough, so we're going to make dramatic changes. We're going to make dramatic moves. Uh, Clay gone. CP3 gone. We're going to try to trade Wiggins. Heck, maybe we even try to trade Draymond. We do whatever we can to turn this roster over in the short term to maximize the Steph Curry window. I don't think that how they do is really going to affect their plans unless they go on a really, really deep run, like win a series or two series, and you get to the conference championship series, and then maybe you look at things differently. I hope you're right, because it seems to me what, like, okay, if you've been following this warrior story for years now, doesn't it feel like the so warrior thing to do <laughs> would be just what they've done, just have all this mess sort of unfold, some of it under their control, some of it not, Tragic passing of a coach yep. right in front of their eyes. Draymond getting suspended. Andrew misses some games. Clay Thompson goes through an early season mental crisis. Whatever. All of that. Mess around, but work your way in. and uh, But have it be something on just like bordering on the ridiculous. Like, I don't know, uh, the 10 seed. And then you win a couple of basketball games. And then... Just get, let's say you do, take on the Minnesota Timberwolves. And after five games, the Warriors are up three games to two. Just spotlight that moment right there. Chase Center is lit up. We're down there at the team store, and the Warriors are about to take the court, and they're up three games to two. Tell me what it sounds like. What does a Warrior fan sound like that night? With regard to the idea of big changes in the offseason. Run it back. Absolutely. You probably have run it back chance in the arena, you know? Then they lose that game. Oh, boy. 
And then they lose. Trade Draymond right now. Yeah, then they lose game seven in Minnesota. Blow it up. See, but the, the fear is, but dibs. It's so close. They're right there. That was last year's against problem. Against the one seed. They put the fear of God in. Right, in Minnesota. But that's sort of your like, okay, fork in the road. Which way do we go? Right, and that's why I think that the front office has already kind of figured out which way they're going to go. And it, to me, the interesting question is, what's the value in keeping this group together from a financial standpoint at the gate? And Steiny made a good point earlier that, you know, the sellouts are mostly because of Steph Curry. He's the one who is box office. Clay and Draymond, less so. Andrew Wiggins, probably not a factor at all as far as, you know, why would you go to Chase Center and spend all that money, $18 beers and all the rest of it? You go there to see the chef. Kaminga's actually second in box office now. Probably, yeah. I, I would argue. I'll buy that. Yeah. If, without a doubt. Yeah. So if you're looking at that going into the offseason and you're Joe Lacob, you're probably thinking about that as the first and foremost decision making factor in all this is how do we keep this building full well that's a great point because i like as a fan that's the stuff that we never think about and we don't want our teams to think about but of course it's actually what drives our teams it's the point i was making about farhan and the giants this offseason they didn't make those moves because they were like okay we've done all the analytics and it turns out jorge soler is the perfect embodiment of the player that we need to go, and that's why he's going to be, we're going to give him three guaranteed years. And uh, and Jung Hoo Lee, same type of thing. Um, this is exactly what we need. Oh, by the way, maybe they are. But that's exactly what we need, and we're going to get back on top in the NL West. I think that's in the conversation, but that's not the first thing that came out of their mouth. Right. The first thing that came out of their mouth is, hey, Farhan, you can fill the building, dude. This building's been full for, for almost 20 years, and now it's not full. It needs to be full. You need to make it full. So whatever you're doing, sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. But we need to do whatever you want to do within a different backdrop so that the stadium's full. So they're like, I got an idea. How about five free agents? Spent three years, couldn't get one. Right. Five in, in what felt like four weeks. Fill the building. That's all they're trying to do. By the way, it worked. It worked, and they're four and six, and they still can't score <laughs> runs. And right. but somehow people are like, "I think I like it." Exactly. Have you noticed the reaction? It's wild. They're four and six, and people are like, "I think it's okay." Good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they were two and five to open up on the road, yeah. and it was like, "Ah, oh, that's fine. It's a long season." It's because there is a certain amount of excitement around the team, and even though they're four and six, and you know, you've got Washington in town tonight. Well, that's I think that's big. It's the first time they're playing someone that not named the Dodgers and Padres. Right, but I, I'm i getting the sense that there's going to be a big crowd tonight for Blake Snell and also the fact that people oh. are excited about this team. Um, speaking